Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Today, well, to begin with, let's start with a quick PSA. Always keep a little bag of band-aids around the workshop because at some point you are going to cut yourself. This one wasn't too bad, just glad I had the band-aids. Okay, let's get on with things. We're going to look at a tool I use when working with styrene. It's called the Touch and Flow Gravity Fed Liquid Solvent Applicator. It's kind of a mouthful, but it's a very simple little tool. Now you may be wondering why I'm showing this little USB powered fan. Well, the liquid solvent I use when joining or welding styrene together is MEK. That's short for methyl ethyl ketone, and it's pretty toxic stuff. The fan is to move the fumes away from the eyes and lungs while using it. I picked this particular fan up for under $10 on Amazon. I'll put links to all the products in this video below in the description box. This model is nice as it has four speeds and it's adjustable. But of course the brand is less important than the movement of air. So any fan is fine. Just be safe and use some kind of fan when working with solvents. Another little item I picked up on my last Amazon shopping binge, coincidentally also around $10, is this steel square. It's a hefty little tool at 3 16 of an inch thick. You just can't have too many perfectly square edges around when scratch building. Also, it's nice that it won't react with the MEK. This little square has a cutout on the inside corner, as you can see. That'll make applying solvent to both sides of a joint just a little bit easier. We now get to the star of this video, the Touch and Flow Applicator. Also, and as you might have guessed, it's right around $10. I see a trend here. In short, this is a glass tube with a metal needle at the end for continuous or pinpoint solvent application. Instead of dipping the applicator into a large open container of MEK, I picked up some neat little 5 milliliter jars with metal screw tops. But at just 3 quarters of an inch tall, these are a bit short. I went back and bought these 10 milliliter jars at 1 and a half inches tall. Much better. The little jars won't go to waste though, I'll find a use for them. MEK. It's dangerous. Okay, now that we've got that dramatic reading out of the way, MEK really is nasty stuff, so if you do use it, be very careful. There are other solvents out there for welding styrene, but I just prefer MEK as it evaporates really quickly and it seems like a thinner liquid to me. It also leaves very little residue on your styrene. Now we'll fill one of our 10 milliliter jars. Probably would have been a good idea here to use gloves as MEK can be absorbed through the skin. Now here I'm using a plastic pipette to fill the 10 milliliter jars. Now 10 milliliters, it doesn't seem like a lot of liquid, but one big benefit of this touch and flow applicator is that not much of the solvent gets wasted, as it might if you were using a brush to apply the solvent. The touch and flow, once filled, really does last a long time. Another thing you can see here is just how fast the MEK evaporates, helped I'm sure by the fan blowing across the table. Also as you can see, by that bit that got spilled, it will remove some of the graphics on my brand new cutting mat. Well, it's sort of like a new guitar. It's not really yours until you put some scratches on it. The large jar of MEK gets stored and we have these very handy 10 milliliter jars on our work table. Much more convenient, in case of a spill. Not that I've ever spilled anything. I'm lying, I spill stuff all the time. Moving on, the touch and flow comes with a single sheet of directions. That's always a good idea to read. But rather than read them for you right now, I'll show you how I fill the applicator. Here we've got our 10 milliliter bottle of MEK. Give it a crack open. Now you can see I've gone with the gloves here because, well, safety is important. Now just to show you, here's the metal tip of the applicator, the other end, is the open glass end. Now filling this couldn't be easier. Just put the opened glass end of the tube into the MEK or your solvent and let the capillary action draw the solvent up. That's it. Before you can apply the solvent, you'll need to turn the applicator right side up and let the solvent flow down to the metal tip as it's doing here. Once it's down at the bottom, look for a single trapped air bubble to rise up through the liquid. You may need to flick the metal tip gently to dislodge this air bubble. And that's it really, you're all set. Once that bubble's gone, you're all ready to begin applying your solvent. A light touch is all that's required really, and you can see the solvent going on very nicely. 
Here again is the air bubble rising up. If the solvent isn't flowing, just that very light flick on the metal tip will generally release it. You can see the single drop hanging on the end of the applicator. Now you're all set to weld your styrene. I'm going to weld just a few random bits of styrene together now. My camera was right on top of this, so seeing exactly what I was doing was a little tricky, but I think you'll get the idea. Back to the MEK, I do find because it evaporates so quickly, you can actually work very fast. Just make sure your pieces are all correctly situated, as the MEK and styrene really does set up in a hurry. That machinist square comes in handy for making little styrene right angles. Some of the melted styrene, as you'll see in a minute, stuck to the craft paper. Now ordinarily, I'd do something like this on glass, but I wanted you to better see this without the overhead light reflections glass would have given. Here I applied another thin line to the solvent, and you can see just how quickly the MEK does evaporate on the paper. I do like to let the welded, or melted, styrene set up for a few seconds before handling it. Now here is where you can see the melted styrene stick to the craft paper. But even with the melted styrene, you can see this simple butt joint is actually pretty strong. To make this a little stronger, I'm going to apply a bit more MEK to the back of this joint. I hope you're getting a good idea of just how little MEK you actually end up using here. As I talked about, MEK is definitely toxic stuff, but by using this applicator, you really end up using a very small amount. I think it might save money and it might even limit the amount of exposure to this chemical. I'm just tacking on a few more styrene bits here. Another suggestion I would have is to use X-Acto blades, new ones to pick up and place the smaller bits of styrene where you want them. Trying to manipulate tiny pieces of styrene with gloves is nearly impossible. Also, wooden coffee stirrers are great for holding things together in place while you're working. I realize this footage isn't overly exciting, but I wanted you to see in real time how quickly the MEK sets up with the styrene. Since this is such a thin liquid, you can easily apply a few extra lines of it or a few extra drops here and there for added strength without obscuring or softening the details of your model. You can see this very thin styrene, let's call it a weird little structure, is actually pretty strong. I'm giving this test piece a pretty good tug and these joints are very solid. To wrap it up here, I strongly recommend the touch and flow applicator and if available by you, MEK as your solvent as long as you take care with gloves, a fan, and an open window or two wouldn't hurt. Thanks very much for watching and I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our Raildig channel. Help us grow! Thanks again and we'll see you next time.